Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So I'm going to be elaborating on my sexual abuse time story. I am going to put this into a couple of parts because I have rambled on for ages but all the bits and pieces that I've said I feel are really important. I'm going to release this one on the Saturday when you're seeing it and then the next one will be the Monday and it will just kind of like be you know the next videos you know afterwards. I'm not going to leave any gaps because there's no point like there's no point leaving any of you on suspense so let's go ahead and get started. And trying to remain so strong I know it's good if I'm wrong I got it I got it Before I get started, I just wanted to put a huge trigger warning out there. I'm going to be talking about sexual abuse and the and themes relating to that. I also briefly mentioned themes of aggression and also like different relationships. So if you're not in the right frame of mind to listen to that sort of thing right now, then skip this video. I've got plenty of other videos on my channel. It doesn't matter. You can come back to this if you feel that you're ever in the right headspace again. But if you don't want to watch it because it's too triggering, then please don't watch it. The last thing I'd want to do is actually trigger anybody. So for me, the grooming process was about six months. And for everyone who goes through sexual abuse, it's completely different. Some people don't even have a grooming process and some people don't even realise it is grooming. So for me, I didn't realise it was grooming. I really didn't realise that that's what he was doing. I just saw him as a friend and I saw him as somebody that was just befriending me and, you know, being nice. So he brought me quite a few gifts and I know that's one of the signs, but basically at the time I was 17 and the, the man who ended up abusing me was 68 at the time and I know that sounds really, really, like, kind of weird, but I'd met him at a drama group and he'd been around kids all the time so I kind of, like, assumed that he was a safe person. But yeah, so he would take me for singing lessons outside of like the the normal like space and uh, initially we didn't really do much we just kind of like you know mess up in the drama group and didn't do much and then I turned 18 and I turned 18 and that was it that was the start of everything the going process was basically from like 17 and a half to 18 and into just past my 18th birthday and then there was like everything just started like sexually. I just want to pause here and say that he actually sexually abused me. He didn't like me, which I think is one of the biggest common conceptions about like, you know, sexual abuse in general. People say sexual abuse, everyone assumes rape. I wasn't raped. I was just sexually abused, like he touched me. So he would buy me lots of gifts and that was like one of the biggest, now I look back on it, one of the biggest telltale signs. So it wasn't just the small little like chocolate bar or the small little bits and pieces, he'd buy me like bigger items. Like the first sort of things he would buy me is maybe like if I was out shopping and I wanted a CD, he'd buy me a CD. And I just thought, okay, he's just being nice, like that's, that's fine. But then it kind of moved on to like when every time I see him, he would give me a little, little gift and I was like, okay. And a few of the things he got me was in the middle of this, the biggest gift I'll get onto, but like a few of the smaller gifts that he would give me is he gave me this little, um, this little box that had three little glass angels in it. And I looked at him and I goes, why are you giving me this? And he said, that was my wife's. And just to back up a little bit, his wife had passed away about sort of five or six years ago. And so, he said that was my wife's and I don't really want it around anymore because it reminds me of her but um, I think you'll like it. And I said, and I said yeah, yeah that, they're, they're quite sweet actually. And I, and I think I was just really saying that because I wanted to make him feel okay. Like in my mind I'm thinking this was his wife's, his wife is now dead. Like how do I react to, like, to that? So I took the gift and like, you know, unbeknownst to me, that was like the, the grooming building up. So time goes on and he gets me a few other things. Another thing he used to get me was like alcohol and stuff and he used to get me drunk. It was okay because usually I would stop and usually I would like, you know, not have too much. But there was one occasion where like I got completely obliterated drunk and I woke up on his sofa the next morning. I don't remember having more than two drinks by the way so I don't really know what happened. He was continually making these drinks and like getting me more and more drunk and I remember having two drinks but after that it's all a complete blur and the next thing I realised is I'm waking up on the sofa and the first thing I said to him was did we do anything? And that didn't seem to phase him. I think at that point I'd kind of like yeah the sexual abuse had started and I kind of like realized that it was going on but also in my mind I 
thought it was normal because he'd told me not to tell anyone and all those bits and pieces. And because of the circumstances relating around the abuse, I felt like I couldn't tell anyone. So I want to get on to like the, uh, the storyline that he kind of gave me in terms of my abuse. So the storyline he gave me was that, you know, he had healing powers. And obviously, you know, if you feel like you've got healing powers, that's fine. But he said he had healing powers. And I was like, okay, you know, like I'd never heard of it before. So I gave him the benefit of the doubt and I let him explain. And he said, you know, that, that basically when his wife had had breast cancer, he'd put his hands on her breast and it had cured it. Later on, I was to find out that basically that was one of his delusional thoughts. And his daughters actually said to me that no, it was the chemotherapy that killed the cancer. That wasn't him that killed it. But being my naive 17, 18 year old that I was, I believed him that it was his healing hands that did it. <laughs> I didn't really know what was happening. And it was almost very confusing because my dad had always said to me, like, pretty girls can get hurt, and he'd explained to me, kind of, the fact that, you know, sexual abuse is a thing, but I didn't really know the warning signs for being sexually abused. And this man had such a, uh, such, such a good plan, I suppose, in a way, because, although it's obviously an evil plan, but he basically became friends with my mum and my dad, and he made it seem like he was just being a friend. And, you know, it kind of almost, the relationship that to everyone else was an older man with no friends, no one to keep him company, his wife has died, you know, needs some company. And a younger girl who also has no friends and has no social life, they're kind of just keeping each other company. And that's kind of how it was seen to the outsider. And I kind of was just like, in a, in like almost like wrapped around his little finger, like he was very much very controlling and I felt like I couldn't talk about it. So the biggest gift was yet to come basically. He uh, he knew that I liked photography and he also knew that I just, you know, I loved taking pictures of things and bits and pieces. So he, uh, he one day came up to me and said, I've got a present for you. And I goes, okay. And he gave me this um, this camera, not the camera I'm filming on, but he gave me a camera. It was a very old camera, one of those big clunky cameras. And it had like the interchangeable lenses and stuff. And he gave me two lenses with it and he gave me the actual camera body. And I don't really understand why, because when I think about it, that gift was probably about 200, 300, maybe 400 pounds because there was two lenses and there was a camera body. And I'm thinking, why are you giving me this? Like, you know, almost like, I'm, I'm trying to be polite. So I accept it because I'm just a, such a polite person and I just, you know, I just think, well, what else do I say? Do I say no? Like, and I didn't really know how to say no because he was so controlling. And for those of you who have been in a controlling situation, you understand that, like, it is really hard to say no. So he basically said to me that because of his healing hands, he was going to transfer his powers through me to heal somebody like in the social media and he used two of my idols against me. So for those of you who like are in like on social media and you know like female pop stars, you'll know about Demi Lovato and Jessie J. So he knew I really liked those two singers and I still really do like those two singers, Demi more than Jessie at the moment but I still love both of their musics. And he would use both of those against me. He knew, he did, the, he did his research and he found out that Jessie had heart condition which I already knew about, but I didn't really think it was significant to mention. And so basically he would keep up to date with the, with the news and he would say, oh, Jessie didn't do her tour because her heart was feeling bad, so she cancelled and rescheduled, so let's try and heal her. So what he would do initially was he would, you know, transfer his healing powers onto me and initially it was through my feet. And that may sound absolutely weird and bizarre, but it was kind of like a thing that you know I didn't really see much of an issue with because again you know going back to the whole thing I didn't know what was wrong I didn't know that what he was doing was a controlling thing so he would touch my feet he would hold my feet and he got me to wear tights and I hated wearing tights but he got me to wear tights because apparently the nylon in the tights helped to transfer his powers more and this sounds absolutely ridiculous to probably every single person watching but this is the story of my sexual abuse and kind of how it all happened. And now I look back on it, I think, why were you so naive, Deanna? Like, why? But at the same time, I know that I was also very, very mentally unwell. So I probably didn't really have the mental capacity to really, like, think about what was happening. I just kind of 
I, I just kind of was more easily manipulated and controlled because I was so mentally unwell. So I'm going to end this video here for today and I'm going to release part two on Monday so you will see like a continuation from this story on Monday. But thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next part. Nobody can make her feel down She was always smiling from me to it